What's going on guys? JD at JD's Custom Buggies. Um, wanted to take the opportunity. I had a customer come in and want to order a bike for his grandson. Now I used to, um, I'm a Thumbstar dealer, Trailmaster dealer. Um, I used to deal with a couple other companies. Don't any longer. Used to be an SSR dealer. Um, but I haven't gotten any bikes in since like COVID. And the reason for that was in 2019, the end, towards the end of 2019, my father passed away and, um, it kind of left my hands uh, full with the business that we had together and, and then the shop. And then with COVID hitting, um, bikes, buggies, vehicles in general were just unavailable. Parts were getting scarce and, you know, through 2020. So, um, you know, speaking to, to the companies or whatnot, they couldn't tell me what colors were coming in, what models were coming in. And basically it was like, well, if you have somebody that wants something, basically you have to pay up front, um, get in line and we'll let you know when the model comes in and then you can pick out, you know, what color you want or, or you know, so, you know, having people come in at Christmas time and say, Hey, um, do you have any buggies? No. Can I order one? And I would just tell them no, because there was no guarantee that I could get them in. And I didn't want to be that person to ruin some kid's Christmas or birthday or whatnot. So... I just kind of um, worked on the website, started stocking parts, more parts I could find. When parts came in, I would overbuy. So, you know, until this whole thing blew over, it's gotten a little better uh, for the most part. There's still some stuff that's kind of hard to find. And, and when vendors run out or the companies run out, um, there is a little bit of a lag. They're not getting resupplied in a timely fashion. So, for instance, if I'm out of a certain item, and they're out of the certain item and I can't reorder. It's usually like a month or two, I'll be out of that item. And it's only because they're out of that item. So going back, um, I had a customer come in last week, one uh, regular customer actually uh, got his kid started with his first bike. And I think at the time it was an SSR. And um, his little brother, uh, another one of his grandsons um, is at the point where he wants to ride like big brother. So. Uh, he had talked to me about what I could get. I said probably the quickest thing I could get him and um, would be uh, Trailmaster. Trailmaster is, I don't know, recently, probably within the last two years, I started really getting into dirt, uh, pit bikes, like pit bike style dirt bikes, um, some ATVs and whatnot, and branding them, you know, Trailmaster. So um, I didn't have any experience with them. Figured I would, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, I like the fit and finish on the buggies. You know, they, they do a good job with the buggies on the buggy side. So, um, figured out a bike to order them. Uh, ordered a 125 with electric start, kickstart backup that's semi automatic. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to give you a quick walk around, take a quick look at it. I'll give you my impressions of it. Um, the only thing I really can compare it to now, I haven't seen an SSR lately. I knew, I think. I think I stopped being a dealer at the end of 18, and I think at 19 they had redesigned the bikes. Um, the old SSR is basically from the 70 all the way to like to the 125s, I believe. We're basically using like clone CRF um, 50 plastics, like CRF 50 plastics would go on an SSR and vice versa. And it, it got a little hokey looking up into the like the 70 looked pretty good. The 110, not so bad, but as the 125, because it was a taller bike, having the same size plastic says that it kind of looked like a CRF 50 on stilts, um, just didn't look proportioned. So this is a smaller 150, um, base, or sorry, this is a smaller 125, um, basically you order by the, the wheel size. Um, so what we got is a 14 inch wheel in the front and a 12 inch in the back seam, uh, by my guesstimation, that would fit the, the kid the best. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at this. I'll tell you what's different. Now, if I compare it to an SSR, it is the old style SSRs, um, pre-20, probably 18 or 19, um, which when I went from SSR to Thumbstar, at the time, the Thumbstar's fit and finish quality blew the SSRs out of the water. This fits somewhere in between. Now, again, comparing to an older SSR, not the newer ones. Like I said, I have not seen the newer ones. So, just a little disclaimer there. Um... Let's take a look at this bike. So, like I said, this is now this is a smallish 125 compared to the SSR 125s that I sold. It is much shorter. This is a 
about in between the size of what the older SSR 70 and 110 used to be. Probably closer to the, the size of the 110. The, the 70 was very smallish, pretty much the same size as the CRF 50. Uh, first thing that stuck out of me, the frame is beefy. Um, for a small Chinese pit bike, and, and when it comes down to it, it is a Chinese pit bike. Um, I recommend these for people who, you know, the kid says, I want a dirt bike. And you don't, you don't want to spend the Kawasaki, Yamaha, KTM money or whatnot. You want to basically get his feet wet. See if he likes this and enjoys it before you actually make an investment. That's mainly what I recommend these for. Or if you just need something cheap to buzz around the pits in or just to play with or whatever. But so the frame compared now, compared to old SSRs and all the other pit bikes that I've seen. Um, and I really haven't dabbled with pit bikes too much since probably the beginning of 19 or halfway through 19. Um, like I said, I had some thump stars here, but thump stars are a different creature. Thump stars are more like a scaled down motorcycle um, compared to these. Um, most Chinese pit bikes, I should say. So thump star is kind of like in a league of its own. Um, but this is a pretty beefy frame. Now it's not one and a quarter inch tubing and it's not one. So it's like one and an eighth inch tubing. Um, but a lot thicker than like most pit bike frames. The, uh, there's a box section up here under the tank that, that is really thick. The, um, the triples, they're, they're probably a cast thing. You know, I mean, I know they're a cast triple, but, um, don't know how they'll hold up, but they, they look like they're pretty decent quality. The forks are impressive. They're inverted forks. Um, the old SSRs didn't have inverted forks, and they had very wimpy tubular uh, old-style forks. Um, better than the, Actually, better than a CRF-50, so I'll say that. Comparing a CRF-50 to the SSR-70, the forks on the SSR-70 were actually beefier. Plus, the other nice thing, giving SSR a compliment, um, you had disc brakes front and rear, and Honda was still on drum brakes. So, um, the plastics are, are definitely pretty cool. Um, kind of like a KTM style plastic, uh, if, if you're going to clone or want to be anything closer to like that than like the, the old style, uh, CRF plastics. But I believe the new SSRs have this similar look. I don't know if it's the exact same set of plastics, but it's similar. Um, swing arm's not bad. What's kind of cool is I've never seen on like the pit bikes that I sold is you got the little, little, uh, mud flap for the shock. Um, but you know, wheels are pretty much standard motor. I'm not too sure about, I, I ended up firing it up. It fired right up, put some gas in it, hooked the battery up. Boom. Electric start works great. Um, the forks are probably the most impressive thing on this little bike. The bars are pretty standard. I'm not really impressed with the grips. This is how they came. Shipped a little bit crumbled up. <sighs> Seem kind of chintzy the material. But I mean, grips are easy to replace, and they're easy enough replaceable with any good aftermarket grip. Um, but overall, um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. The other thing I noticed, this is a pretty hefty pipe for a little 125. It's, it's pretty thick, pretty impressive. Um, I don't know how the jetting comes, but and they had warned me a couple years ago that this was going to happen. And uh, it's now happened. There is no idle screw on this anymore. And that's an EPA thing. You're not going to find. You're probably finding if you've bought one recently, whether it be a dirt bike or an ATV. And it might start happening on buggies real soon if it hasn't happened already. At least a carbureted buggy because most of them are going to EFI anymore. But um, there's no idle screw on that. So that tube right there is basically where the idle screw should be. No mas. Um, so, and that's one of those things that... And most likely, and I haven't looked, I haven't taken the carb off, but it's probably a riveted carb anyway. When that carb goes, the intake looks beefy enough. You could probably replace it with like the $50 uh, Mikuni Chinese knockoff that you find on like Thumbstar comes with them. Um, it's a good carburetor. It's like a PZ or not a PZ. Is it a PZ22? Something like that. But um, it's, it's not a, t it, I don't think they call it a TM, but it's the same carb. I carry them. They come uh, OEM on thumb stars. It's good carb for these bikes and actually liven it up and make it run a little smoother. Um, so yeah, that was one thing I noticed is yes, no idle screw. If you, I had to adjust the idle a little bit. I had to do it through the throttle cable. 
So, other than that, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happily impressed. I didn't know what to expect because, you know, like I said, Trail Master's always been good. I've always stood by the buggies. I kind of like them. Uh, fit finish has always been good, better than any other brand I've sold in the past. Um, they just seem to last longer. Uh, even the paint seems to last a little better um, than other brands. I don't want to, I'm trying not to disparage anything. Um, but it's just, and, and it's my personal opinion just from working on these things all the time. But for the money, um, and I don't know what SSRs cost these days, but for the money, this is something you might want to consider. Um, now I don't have a ride, you know, I don't have a ride on it. I'm not going to sit there and, and, and <laughs> ride a brand new bike that's getting picked up in, in the next hour or so. So, um, but just first impressions from walking around it and putting it together. Assembly was fairly easy. I had a, um, basically you have to put the front wheel on, bolt up the rear shock, put the bars on. I'm very out of practice and I think I uncrated this thing, put it all together and even checked all the other nuts and bolts on it. Um, it took me about 45 minutes, but I, I used to slap like 10 of these, I used to get like 10 of these in a day, this kind of bikes and, 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 and just have to go to town on them. Um, the other, the other nice thing I want to mention is the, the Kickstarter is a one piece deal, um, which should last longer. If you've had a Chinese pit bike and, and these came on all the SSRs and I actually own an SR170. I don't know if you ever seen them. It's a very, very fast, fast pit bike. Should be illegal. Um, with a lot of compression and basically it's about as hard to kick over as like a 450 would be. And it had that chintzy, that chintzy um, Kickstarter that was chrome and pretty much just like square and over and, uh, and hinged up here at the top. Like the little thing used to flip out and you'd kick it. It, the whole lever didn't roll out like this. It was just the, the top part that kicked out and had a rubber boot on it. And trying to kick over that 170, I would. I mean, even it didn't have to be the 170. You would knock the rubber boot off if the bike was hard starting on you. Um, you know, if it didn't kick over and you had to sit there and try and kick, 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 the little rubber boot would come off. And actually, I stock. I was stocking those Kickstarters because they break a lot. This thing looks a lot more, uh, a lot more stout and a lot better. And the nice thing about it is that it, it kicks out far enough that it'll give you clearance if you need to kick it. But it does have electric start. Uh, I would have one with the kick start back up just because um, I thought it would be handy if the battery ever went dead, they could still ride. Um, so, that's pretty good. I guess we'll um, I'll turn the key. So basically, you just turn this key down here. And... turn the key off but yeah um i hope these uh i hope these folks are are thrilled with it i think the kid will be thrilled he, he was in here the other day picking out red gear to match the bike so uh i'm about to give them a call and tell them it's ready for pickup so that being said um thanks for tuning in i just figured like i said this is kind of off the beaten path of what i'm usually the stuff i'm usually posting but i figured if i'm getting new vehicles in here and, and You'd want to at least take a look at it. This would be a good place to do it if I'm getting them in. So, um, looking at this bike, I might even consider um, starting to get bikes in stock again just because I've had enough locals come in and ask about it. So, um, I would definitely uh, compare the stuff I've sold in the past. I have no problem uh, putting this on the, on the floor and, and selling them for, you know, it suits the purpose. So, uh, if you like what you see, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And uh, if you need parts, go to gotbuggies.com. Thanks a lot, guys. JD's out.